funny, I was never good at math, but I'm not bad with money. <laughs> Failed the counting twice. <laughs> I feel like you have her with this shirt on. The out of it, baby. I could afford it because I saved so much money buying my car. <laughs> Kill the intro, sis. You know she's not your average show. Not your average show. Before we get started, a huge shout out to Car Cruise, who's sponsoring today's video. I didn't own a car until I was about 27 years old. <gasps> Doo -doo -doo! So my mom, being a very Brazilian mother, had this rule when we were growing up. We weren't allowed to get our license until we were 18. Which I'm like, but mine, she's not that of as you. And she didn't care. So I didn't learn to drive until I was living in New York City. And so then I really didn't use my license and I didn't need a car. Then I moved to LA. I lived in LA without a car for five plus years. Doo -doo -doo! until I realized one day that spending money on rideshare apps was actually more expensive than owning a car. So that's when I decided it was time to buy my own vehicle. So here's some tips if you're thinking about buying your car. First things first, decide if you wanna buy or lease. After doing some digging and doing some math, I realized that for me, the best option was to buy a car because if you're leasing, you're always gonna have a monthly payment or you can lease to buy, which is an option as well. I didn't love the idea of leasing a car just because if I can shed one bill every month, then I will do that. And when you buy, even though you might have monthly payments because you're, you're financing the car unless you pay it all at once, but eventually that payment will end. So you'll pay up until you reach the value of the car and then at which point you don't have that bill anymore and the car is 100% yours. Of course there's that saying that people say a car depreciates the minute you drive it off the lot. Which is true as far as money is concerned but it's not like it's not a value to you because you're using the car to get around. But again do the math. There's a great YouTube video down below by one of my favorite YouTubers who talks about the difference financially between buying and leasing. The reason why people like leases though, which I get, is that the repairs are taken care of, it's less hassle, you're not coming out of pocket it as much but be aware that you're always gonna have that monthly payment and then the other perk about leasing is that you get to swap out the car for a newer car but if you're like me who's not like a car enthusiast and doesn't need a car every year or every two years then you don't need a lease what, who am i trying to impress y'all who i'm trying to impress is my bank account by saving money <laughs> plus another perk of owning a car is that when you're ready to sell the car if you own it you get a trade-in value of course it's not going to be the same amount of money as you once paid for it because like we said a car depreciates the minute you drive it off the lot but it's still gonna be something towards your next car whereas when you lease you just lease until the lease contract is up and then you start a new lease contract and then it goes on until the end of time okay so to determine if you found a good deal or not you should be checking on car gurus because they have an algorithm determined by the price the history and the options of all the cars to give you the stamp of approval of if it's a good deal or if it's overpriced only 30 percent of all the cars listed get the good deal approval so if you find a good deal you better snag it honey i'm a homework queen when it comes to spending money before you show up to the dealership it's really helpful if you do some research and check all of your financing options so when you show up you're confident about your decision so yes smart car shoppers know that car gurus can help find a great deal on a car but now car gurus can actually help with financing too with car gurus finance in advance car shoppers get a personalized financing offer and see their real monthly payment all before contacting the dealer you enter your information and you get a personalized rate not an estimate of what you would actually be paying on a monthly basis i'm a planner i like to know exactly how much money to the penny that i'm spending other sites might give you estimates but why would you settle for an estimate when you can get the actual rate based on your finances there's no impact on your credit score and it only takes minutes so show up to the lot with your financing options ready to go car shopping is so stressful that you don't want to wait until the very end of the process to figure out your financing don't be afraid to buy a used car a lot of people are weary of buying a used car but I am a used car owner and she is proud of it I actually bought a used car that used to be a rental which is controversial some people might not like that idea because there's this whole philosophy that there's more wear and tear on a rental because so many people rent it but what I found is that if you're buying a modest car like my car is a Ford Fusion sedan it's a hybrid the person who's renting a Ford Fusion sedan hybrid is not gonna be doing donuts on the highway and the wear and tear is not gonna be extreme the thing about buying a used rental also is that they have to go through a series of inspections and pass tests by the rental agencies so that they can continue to be rented so when you're buying a rental sure it has a little bit more mileage than somebody's personal car. So buying a used rental is a great way to buy a used car that feels like new with a used car price. 
Find out when the warranty expires because cars are expensive, not just because when you buy them it's expensive, but the maintenance on cars get expensive, especially if you get some older car that needs a lot of work or a foreign car where the parts are hard to buy. The downside to buying a newish car that's a rental is that you might buy it right at the line where the warranty expires. And so you just wanna be aware of that before you buy it. If you could buy a used car that has lower mileage where the warranty is still applicable, that's the win-win. But if you're like me, you buy a car and like the next day the warranty expires, it is what it is. One of the things that I learned the hard way is that when your warranty expires, you have to come out of pocket for any battery damages. So after a long trip, I came home to find my car dead and I had to come out of pocket $400 to get that battery replaced. Rest in peace. If you're leasing a car or if you're buying a car, it's really important to know the mileage average that people recommend that you have per year. For instance, some leases will actually limit you on your mileage at 12,000 to 15,000 miles a year. And if you go over that, like if you love taking road trips, a lease might not be your best choice. Because if you're taking road trips, you're gonna go past that mileage and then you're gonna end up paying so much money when you give the lease back and ain't nobody got time for hidden fees. Another way to determine a car's value if you're buying a car is also to divide the number of years it's been around by 12,000 miles, which is the average amount of miles that people recommend that you drive it a year. If the average number is more than 12,000, then you know that that car has been used a lot more than an average car, AKA a rental, like my car had way more than 12,000 miles a year on it when I when I did the math, but it was still a good value for me because it was a great car and felt like new despite the high mileage. And it wasn't too high where it was alarming, but it was higher than somebody's personal vehicle. Know all the hidden fees before you go in to buy a car because I'm telling you y'all, buying a car is like a Shark Tank episode. It's really intense. A lot of the dealerships might include these like random unnecessary things that you don't need to be paying for. And unless you know what you're looking for, you you might get ripped off. So at the end of your purchase, be that guy. Ask for a line item receipt and ask about every single cost and ask if it's necessary and you'll be able to catch some fees that you might not be needing to pay after all. And here's a bonus tip, ask for rugs, like little car mats because Stingy dealers don't want to even give you car mats and like these are things I wish I knew before you actually sign on the dotted line to buy your car Be sure to take it to a mechanic a third-party mechanic that has nothing to do with the dealership And make sure that that mechanic is well reviewed and call them and get your car inspected your future car inspected So you're gonna have to ask the dealer if you could drive the car off the lot to go get it inspected by a mechanic You're gonna probably have to drop it off for 45 minutes Maybe you want to make an appointment in advance so that you have it scheduled you're gonna be paying a hundred bucks or more But it's worth it to get an opinion on the car before you commit to it there could be some damage that you're not aware of when the mechanic says there's nothing wrong with this car you'll be confident about your selection another way you're gonna save money in the long run is by buying a hybrid or an electric car I know that it's not for everybody I personally was looking for a hybrid at least a hybrid I wanted an all-electric car but there weren't enough charging stations around my house to commit to an electric car and I don't have a garage where I can plug it in so a hybrid was the next best thing and the reason why I love hybrids is one it's better for the environment as our electric cars and two you end up saving so much money on gas that in the long run You're just gonna be happier about it when you have a hybrid car You can actually be driving on all electric power if you're driving slow enough or if you're coasting downhill It regenerates the power when you brake. So it's just like a good machine So maybe you want to buy a hybrid save some money save the planet. It's a win-win pretty soon We're all gonna be having electric vehicles zipping around town like a futuristic utopian movie Also, don't forget about all the features that come associated with buying a car. It's not just buying the car, it's gas, it's insurance, it's maintenance fees, it's registration. When you're selecting a car, you might wanna go on the modest side because if you get an expensive car, once you bake in fees that come up, you're gonna be hurting. You gotta act broke to stay rich is my motto. You do whatever's good for you, but just be aware that whatever you think you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay that and so much more. Welcome to adulting where bills never stop. And the last tip I have for you is do the math. See if owning a car is even right for you. If you live in a place where there is no public transportation, then you have no real option here. But you might even want to get creative and co-own a car with a friend. If you don't have a car right now and you want to see if it's worth it, you might want to put all of the transportation that you spend on one credit card so you have an easy way to track how much money you're spending a month. And if that amount of money is more than it would be if you were buying a car, then there's your option, which is what I did. Everything comes down to math. If it makes sense mathematically, then it's a good choice. I had my license for 
for nine years and then I finally bought my first car. So I lived a beautiful, abundant life without a car. We're living in a world where there's so many options to get around. Uh, public transportation is great. Ride share apps are great. Biking, walking, all of those things are great. But when you do buy a car, at least now you got some tips to save that shmoney. Another huge thank you to Car Gurus for sponsoring today's video. There's nothing better than showing up ready to buy something prepared because the person selling you the thing is just gonna be surprised. They're gonna be like, wait, what? This young girl knows everything about cars? Like I can't even scam her. Exactly, sir. You can't scam me because I did my research. Thanks.